All right, uh, I think we're live. Let me check. And damn, I hate how they restructured the channels. They're so annoying. Test. All right. So let me mute that. Let's get this out of the way. So if you can't tell from the title, we are going to be repairing this original Xbox console. It has a failed hard drive in it. We're going to be swapping it out with a different one. Before we get into it, there are a couple things you're going to need. You're going to need one of these art proms, which is going to rip the EEPROM directly from the board. You're going to need a way to, if it's, uh, depending on what kind of console you've got, some of the headers will actually have solder on them already you'll have to clean them out i'm using this tool right here to suck up the solder of course you can use a solder wick it's just mostly a preference thing i don't have solder wick and this is a cheaper alternative so we're going to be using that um you're going to need some isopropyl alcohol to of course clean it up and flux the isopropyl alcohol i use is 91 percent though you're fine between 70% all the way to 100% if that if they even make 100% or not, I don't know. So, let's go ahead and get into repairing this. Let me get my chat opened here, and we're ready to go. I already went through and took out the screws, so I could just pop this off. And of course, another, another filthy console, because that's just how things are these days. Let me get some of this stuff out of the way. And let's go ahead and get this out here. Now, I don't know if you all are able to hear it, but the hard drive clicks. And I mean, it, it's not really hard to miss it. But there is no saving this drive. This, this drive is dead. So definitely not something you want to listen to. Um... So it does look like we do have all three of the screws inside it. So that's very promising. Get this little guy out of here. All right. Let me set this up here out of my way once again. And then let me grab my screwdriver. I think this is a, a either T15, T or T20. Actually, no, I think it's a T8. Yeah, it's a T8. So, this is probably a T20. And this is a T8. Now, I do have the little special bits with the hole in the center. So, autofocus will work here. But, if I can get my screwdriver in at the bottom down here that you all can't see. going to use a, a lid get these screws in look at that little guy just hanging out there hey what how are you i'm good getting ready for a cardiac mri tomorrow well i'm glad you're doing okay koopa i am doing just fine and also welcome to the channel it's been it's been quite some time it appears that youtube still does not fix their uh live count so that's awesome oh look at that go ahead and pop this little guy out and my little handy dandy uh tweezers here to all right so what do i need to do First, I need to obviously pull out this old drive. And I will be replacing it with a Max Tor. So, hopefully, this should in theory work. I don't, I've already flashed, or not really flashed, I already transferred over all the files I was needing onto it. Let's see. I need cable select 
So it needs to be in TV second, which it is. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this little guy out here. Stat aside and give it a good pull. Hey, that's not bad at all. And it's actually a lot cleaner than I thought it would be. All right. So that is promising. That is very promising. Of course, you got some little guys hanging out down here, but let's not worry about them right now. Uh, with this drive. Yeah, well, we've got to take the whole board out anyway. Might as well just lift this little guy up here. This is a Phillips, which they're an okay brand. I have had issues in the past. So, this Xbox already has some solder on it. Get out of here. Already has some solder on the uh, terminals right here. We've got to clean that up. That way so we can get our little tool right here onto the board. So, let's go ahead and get this IDE cable out of here. I've got an 80-pin IDE cable on its way, so we'll be able to fix up all the other Xboxes that are laying around my room. Kernel is 4817. Not the newest kernel. We can easily update that, so no issue there. So, let's go ahead and get this disconnected. I want to say this is like a version 1, because it does not have a um, fan on it. As you can see at the top right corner right here, you can in fact add one into it as a third party modification. Though I don't think I'm going to be doing that. Not for this Xbox. This is mostly a... Uh... Oh, what's the word I'm looking for here? I just, I'm drained it right now, I just can't think. Ah, refurbished. There we are. It is a, well, it's going to be a refurbished console. Still cleaning up some of the flux I spilt last night from the last stream. That's okay. Still got my little microfiber cloth under my CD drive. I better go ahead and disconnect that. Put the power to it. Because there is a caution on it. And it's a revision C3, whatever that means. Hopefully it's something good. Also, is the light okay? Do I need to change the light or anything like that? I know autofocus is just not happy right now. Let's see if we can get a better image here. So, got a little guy hang hanging out right there. Let's just get these little guys out of the way here. Of course, there's still more over here, and but we'll we'll deal with that. We'll deal with that in a few. So before I remove any more screws, I just remembered this connector is a pain in the ass. And this chip, it is let's see, ST. So that is a 1.0 to 1.3. Actually, no, 1.0 to 1.2. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I could be mistaken. Feel free to uh, correct me, because you're probably gonna probably gonna correct me anyway. But let's go ahead and get this up. <laughs> you little bastard! I can't tell if the uh, clock capacitor is leaked though. The uh, clock capacitor is right here at the bottom. A lot of dust everywhere. But I don't know until I clean the board up. Come 
Hot damn. Let's get these out of the way here. There's got to be an easier way to do this, but I haven't discovered it just yet. Uh, there's no easy way to get this guy out. I can get him over the lip. There we go. Eh, finally. All right. Should not be that hard to take that out. It's just this hasn't been open before. So we've got that done. Let's go ahead and get this other screw out. Don't look like we got one from the top. Got another one over here. Connector. Of course, you still can't see. We're going to we'll go ahead and. Pull this board out of here after we remove this cable. All right. Missed one. Right in our face. All right. Any more live guys hanging out? Other than you? Come on. Easy does it. There we go. Oh yeah. Needs a little cleaning. Yeah. A little infestation, but it's not new. Other than that, I mean the board looks pretty decent. So it doesn't look like that clock capacitor has leaked at all. So that's actually pretty surprising. We're of course we're gonna clean this board up a bit, and then we're gonna clean up these solder joints right there. Let's go ahead and get this Xbox out of the way here. All right, my soldering iron is preheated. Let's get one of our already used Q-tips out. Of course, this is some 91 uh, isopropyl alcohol. It's mostly a preference base on whatever you want to use. Let's get this board situated here. Same for this camera. Yep. All right. So this is our main focus, but we've got to we've got to clean this board off. Yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely needs a good clean in here. Actually, it does appear there's some kind of uh, substance on the board right there next to this clock capacitor. There's a bit of colored difference. Uh, I can't English. There is a color difference onto it. Oh, yeah. So, as you can see, Everyone on the board that I've already swabbed with isopropyl alcohol cleaned right up. There's definitely some kind of stuff on here because isopropyl alcohol is not immediately drying up. 
So that clock capacitor is definitely bad. But there's no real reason that we need to change it since we're going to be soft mod we're gonna soft mod it to hard mod it since it is flashable. So essentially hard modding it it will automatically set the clock so there's no point in having a clock capacitor. We just need a clock capacitor there for right now because I don't have one on hand at the moment sadly. What we are going to do is after we get this board cleaned up a little bit right here we need it to be able to boot to then get the executable running stuff like that. But that's, of course, going to be in a separate video. Our video right now is to just clean this up, get it ready for a new drive. Yeah. And then we'll be good to go. I do notice, why is there a uh, capacitor missing? C2F3. If anyone can tell me what that goes to, please do. I don't have much documentation on these consoles. Although, it would be pretty nice if there was some documentation I can just look at. Yeah, there's definitely some leakage from that capacitor. Do note, don't be using a, a toothbrush or anything like that to be scraping if there's a lot of corrosion. You warp up these little, these little, little components. And when you do that, you're going to rip the pads. And when you rip the pads, it's done. Right then and there. Unless you have a utility CD that I've got that will just, when you boot it up on a hard modded console, it will automatically set the clock. So... Be very careful on working on things like these. They are very easy to break and components are easy to rip off. All right, so that's done. Let's go ahead and get some flux on this. Yeah, we'll use some cheap flux. We're not soldering anything. Gotta dab it. Better to have too much than none at all. Let's not have what happened last time when we'll close it. And then we've got a little tool ready. So, the best way that I've found to clean these out is rotating the board just a dab bit, putting your tool on one side. Put it here, and then just sticking it to it. It's like a mist. A mist. Let's set it like this. Not a very good camera angle, but nothing I can terribly do about it. What's going on here? Oh, there's crap on it. Alright, let's try this again. Like I said, if you had some solder wick, it'd be a little bit easier, but. Alright, so that one's done. Go on to this next one here.
that one. Let's get this bottom one. We're almost there. Six more left. Almost screwed that one up. All right, and then one more. So, hard part's done. We've got those hood, hose hoses holes cleaned out. Not too bad. Go ahead and get some isopropyl alcohol on it and clean it up. I'll use this one. Now there's a couple points that we need to connect, I believe. In order to make that board rideable. So let me quickly take a look here. Because you don't want to fuck this up. C7, C4, I believe, is one of them. In the back. There should be one. Or seven or four. Yep. Let me pull up some documentation here. Where's the keyboard? Because I need to take a look on how this needs to go. Oh. I need to clean my desk up. Let's see. All right, so clean out the pins. R73, I don't think this board has an R73. Should be over here somewhere. Let me grab my magnifying glass to see. Which is up under my CD drive. So we have an R73. R73, so that would be that one right there. We've got to bridge that one. And then we've got to bridge 
Let's see if I can find it here. Or seven or four. All right, so. R7, R4, where are you? Show me over there. R7, R4 is right there. So, let's get a close and look on this in here. All right. Camera getting wobbly. So, let's see if I can close up here for you or seven or four is that little red thing right there better bridge that tiny connector so let's put some flux on that let's bridge that connection here I think that's got yeah, it's a little too hot. Let me turn that down a bit. Got a little sucker to get soldered here let me turn this off and let it cool down a bit because that believe it or not is really really hot I need to add some solder A little bit though. Alright, so that soldered. Move to the other side. What we're doing is those two connections are the read and write protection on the EEPROM. So we've got to make it accessible to read and write to the EEPROM. This will also help us in the long run for doing the uh, the flash chip on it or we go to reflash the EEPROM. So let me see if I can find that other point. It was R7. That one right there. I forgot I turned it off. Might help if it was on. It was getting too hot. Those two are bridged now. Ooh, they were. Yeah, 
get some more solder. There we go. Alright. So, that part's done. Now, let's go ahead and put it back into the case for the Xbox. Get my chat open back here. Uh, hi, I am new here. Hello, welcome to the stream. Hmm. If I had a cannon compressed air, it would be nice. Sadly, I don't have that luxury. All right. Well, it's better than what it was. Let's go ahead and get this back into the board. Bend that prong down there back. Now we'll go into the Ethernet board here. Seriously, what the hell? Back off. Alright, there we go. Alright, so that's in. Let's get this back up. So, we need to connect this yellow cable down here for the power button. I can just hold that there. We then need to grab our micro SD card. I'm using this little fancy adapter for it to plug it into my computer. Just click it in like so. Of course, just plop her down. Let me uh, make sure that pin is not in there. This one's missing a pin, so I've got to subtract a pin. The button and the SIM card will always face towards the power supply. So that one's out. Plop this little guy on. All right, beautiful fit. That's beautiful. Let's give it power. Come on. An error. There we go. Now it read it. Give us a green light. Go ahead and power this off. It's not powering off. Let's go ahead and plop this back into the computer. And I got another tool to view the EEPROM. Instead of having to use Fast Explorer to view it. Go ahead and jump over here. Let me hide that. Hide that and give me the device capture. 
there's the desktop. We'll be using this EEPROM tool right here. Uh, not exactly sure what it's viewing. Let's go ahead and open it. Should be this one right here. All right, there is the hard drive key that we will need. Copy that. Which that is what you're gonna need to make the hard drive work. So go ahead and close that because we don't need that now. And then let's see here. How do we want to go about this? For the hard drive itself. See, got an 80 pin connector. I'm gonna need that most likely. Yeah. Uh, I got a new idea. I'm going to utilize a Xenium mod chip to do this flash. I will need a Philips. Still it directly out of my modded console here. Let me see if I can find that Philips. I wasn't expecting to do this. I guess there's a time for everything. Be a little inexpensive to do it this way. Because this way you don't require a, an 80 pin IDE connector since we're about to pop in a, another hard drive to it. Alright. And this guy has got to go on that little guy down there. So, a little spring loaded doohickeys down here. Little guy on. Make sure he goes into I believe it's this one right there. Shove right in like a boss. All right, let's go ahead and pull this guy off. And then we will put this screw into it. Fasten it down. Alright, that guy's secured. Alright. Let us switch over to the other channel. We're going to, of course, verify that this is where it needs to be. Actually, it's not. It's not where it needs to be. It needs to be down one pin. Now it's where it needs to be. I'm going to connect the video to the back. Of course, this board is not secured down. It's quite alright, though. It is correct. You can tell by the lights. Okay, I'm going to pop this little guy on the keeper, little GPU cool here, and what we are going to do is hook everything back up. I'm going to use this Xenian chip to lock the board, or not lock the board, but I'm going to use it to lock the hard drive. Reason being, I don't have the 80 pin IDE that I need, because I don't have 
an IDE hard drive on hand. I tried ordering one, didn't go well. They scammed me. So, but you know what? Why do that when I could just go to Computer Pros and grab a $20 SSD? It's in there finally. Drop this little guy in. Grab that. We're going to put this guy in. Of course, it was all temporarily because I'm definitely not leaving a mod chip in it. Alright. So I can get this little guy in here. Come on, you bastard. There we go. And let me see, I need my controller. You know, OEM Xbox controller. We ever connect these front panels. Cause I'm gonna need those connected. I did not, but I can quickly fix that. This is why you check your work before you uh, just plop everything together. Okay, that's back in. All this back together now. That's back together. Now all that's left is for us to connect our little Xbox cable, lock this hard drive, and then we're good. I turned it on wrong. You gotta press the eject button. The boot in the Xenium OS, disk tools, Let's see, we need to lock the hard drive. And then let's launch. All we need is a Microsoft icon and there we go. Now, of course, we've got an error 16, which is due to the uh, dashboard files being modified. So, other than that, we've got a hard drive, and that's that's all we need. We're good. So, go ahead and turn this guy off. We've already got a little guy here that we used to grab the EEPROM. So we've got a backup of the EEPROM. If anything was to happen during flashing. And that's it. We're done. So, thank you all for tuning into this uh, live stream or slash video. Hope you all enjoyed it. I know I did, because I'm making some money here. And I will see you all in the next video.